hey, another new movie. I'm liking this. I totally forgot this was coming out. Capone. So Capone's directed by Josh Trank. He directed Chronicle and I'm totally giving him a pass on Fan Four Stick. I will say he came up with what could have been an interesting idea for a Fantastic Four movie. So now we have a story of Al Capone, kind of. Like, not a story you would expect when you hear that there's a story about Al Capone. Because Al Capone had syphilis and his mental state just started declining and now we're here. This is that movie. It's the movie of someone's mental state deteriorating and we see them going mad. In that, it's gonna require a lot from a couple people in this movie. First and foremost, Tom Hardy. Funny enough. The dude's always great, and I can think of a few movies where I'm like, you mumble and groan a lot. But is he great in those movies? <laughs> yes, he absolutely is, and he's great in this movie. I mean, at a point in this movie, he couldn't physically do much, but don't ever make the mistake of thinking, okay, sweet, the actor, he just doesn't have to worry about the physicality anymore. Oh no, <laughs> that's still important. Tom Hardy makes it work. Anytime you can walk away from a movie like this, and you're like, I really felt like that person was mentally declining, yeah. Also, Linda Cardellini plays Al Capone's wife. A lot rests on her shoulders in this one. Although I was actually really interested in his mental decline, a lot rests on her shoulders because she's the heart and soul of the movie. I know nothing about the real person when it comes to her. Heck, I'm not even an Al Capone aficionado. But really, this whole situation and how it impacts her and how it rests on her shoulders, that's the heart and soul of the movie. That's really the reason you care. You give a shit because it's just a horrible situation for her to be in. So Tom Hardy had to sell the mental decline of Al Capone. She had to sell us in caring because we care about her. And I weirdly dug this movie. I mean, it's not a perfect movie. It definitely has issues pacing and otherwise, but I was really digging this different look into Al Capone's life. Usually it's Al Capone and Tommy guns and murder and mayhem. And there are bloody segments in this movie, usually dealing with hallucinations he's having or memories. But I was enjoying the fact that we got this other kind of look into his life that not many movies really give us. In that, yeah, it feels like it should be more of a companion piece to your general knowledge of Al Capone it assumes you know who this guy is and that's a pretty fair assessment. A fair assumption if ever there was one. Most people know that Al Capone was a murderous mobster. But if by chance you don't know who he is and you don't really know what Al Capone did, then you're just gonna watch this movie like, why do I care? Which it helps to have her involved. But still, it doesn't give you everything. It doesn't give the groundwork. It doesn't give you the setup. You just go into this movie knowing who Al Capone is. Watch one of the movies or Wikipedia search. And that's what you're gonna have to know going into this movie. You don't get all the Tommy gun action and the mayhem. It's not the untouchables. So he's still being watched by the FBI, which is a small part of it. And I feel like there's a little bit of false advertising going on. IMDB has a proper description for this movie. The 47 year Al Capone after 10 years in prison starts suffering from dementia and comes to be haunted by his violent past. An apt description if ever there was one. That is what the movie is about. Now let's look at Amazon, which is how I saw this movie. Alfonso Capone, Tom Hardy, is a ruthless businessman and bootlegger who once ruled Chicago with an iron fist. In an effort to retain his fortune, he hides away millions of dollars in a place that only he knows and everyone else is dying to uncover. In this harrowing and true untold story of his life, Capone will stop at nothing to protect himself, his family, and his money. What the fuck? That is not at all what the movie's about. I mean, it's in here. Sure, yeah, but that's like the description of Empire Strikes Back being like, after accidentally stumbling across stormtroopers in the Cloud City, C-3PO's now broken body hides an important message for his friends. I mean, it's in there. But that's not what the movie's about. Do not go into Capone expecting some big grand chase for his money and he's gonna protect it. If you're gonna watch Capone, you gotta watch Capone with the mindset of, I wanna see this decline of this person's mental state. This former mobster's mental state. I wanna see the things that haunt him now. I actually really like that. The fact that this person, as they've aged, you can blame it on the dementia, sure. Well, that's probably the reason. But I like the fact that it showed that you do monstrous things early on in your life and when you get older, do those things haunt you? I don't know if that's how it was, but it made for some interesting cinema for me. And it did a good job at blurring the lines for the viewer of where the sanity is ending and where the insanity is beginning. Most movies would make that confusing. Sometimes it was confusing, but I never got the feeling that that's not how I was supposed to feel. I felt like I was experiencing the dementia as the movie was trying to make me experience it. In the end, I'll say Capone was a solid time. No alcohol required. All right, so Capone, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or what's your favorite Tom Hardy performance? Everything from Shinzo of Remus to pelts. You comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.